Girls, Mulhall here, uh, in the physics department in the University of Scranton. And I'm going to show you how to use the Cavendish balance to measure big G, Newton's universal gravitational constant. This is really cool. So if you, if you look in here, what we have is we've got these lead spheres. There's one on this side and there's one on the other. And they're sitting on a, on a little uh, swivel. We can move these back and forth. And inside here, these lead spheres can attract this, these balls. So as we see it here, this, is, this big ball is going to attract that smaller one and they're going to try and turn this uh, arm counterclockwise as you look down on it. If I swing them over here, they'll attract them, they'll tend to twist this arm clockwise. This is sitting on a very fine tungsten wire. So there's two approaches we can do to measure in G with this device. Uh, the first is we can, just, we can just have it torqued as far as we can counterclockwise, wait, then bring it over here and wait. And then we can measure the difference in angles and, that'll, and we know that we know the um, torsion constant of the wire and we can figure out all this kind of stuff. That's uh, one thing to do. Another thing we can do is we can pump it. So this torsion, this pendulum, has a natural period. And what we can do is, we can, you, we can say, pull, we can say twist her clockwise, and when she's coming around, we can twist her counterclockwise. And when she's coming around, just say it again, we can twist her clockwise. What we do is we can push it. And, and watch the amplitude of the oscillations increase. That's a more accurate way to do it. You can look through the manual and you can actually, you should probably do both ways to do it. So I'm just going to, just to show that there's no uh, cheating or no mystery in all of this stuff, I'm going to um, uh, open up the uh, software and take some data right now. Okay, so I just go here and I go down to Cavendish USB and there we are. And now, if we see up here, it says minus 9.7 millirads. So what this, this uh, is doing is it's measuring the capacitance and it's turning the capacitance into an angle measurement. But the, to take the tension off the wire, we've lowered the beam. So now I'm going to raise the beam. So I'm going to loosen this up and I'm going to raise the beam until she's just up halfway and even. And now, it's swing a little bit. I'm going to start, we might as well start recording data. And I'm going to zoom in on the x-axis. And am I recording? I think I am. Oh, here we are. Uh, it bounced all the way down to the bottom. So it's rattling off the edges now. So this is what we can expect. Uh, because I disturbed it, so I set it swinging. And so now it's at minus 28 millirad. And it'll, it'll, it'll oscillate like this. When it settles down, you can start taking data. I'm going to show you how I'm going to show you a data set that I took previously, uh, yesterday, and we can um, and we can talk about that. Okay, let me cancel that. Load. Let's load up in a in the file cabinet. Well, hall driven relax. Okay. So this is what I took yesterday. I turned it on. I wait. I waited for it to settle. Then I started taking data, and it was going back and forth. So I followed the manual. I'm going to zoom in on the data here. I follow the manual and it says, when it reaches a turning point, uh, drive it back the other way. So when it was up here, I quickly brought this over here like that. And then I waited, then when it was down here, I quickly brought it back. When it was here, I brought it back again, and I just followed through every step of the manual, and this is the data that I got. I don't trust this data because you see, if you look here, the periods are get the, the, peri the amplitudes are getting bigger, bigger, then it's small and it grows bigger again. So I would just take this as, I would take um, those two sets and those two sets and I would use those to extract G um, independently. So you have to make these kind of uh, decisions. And then I made a note of it, you see, I, I made in the comment down here, I made a note, I said I took 13 turning points, then I did the K freely at 1481 seconds to get the parameters for equation two. That's equation two is inside the manual. So at this point here, that point, I, 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 you could, I, I just let it go freely. I didn't do anything. So now there's a free decay. I'm zooming in and out here, like with this. It's just, it's freely decaying here. And now you could take all this data, we'll say from here to here, and fit it to a to a damped, an exponentially damped um, oscillator, and you can get the appropriate parameters for the physical system. So you can save this stuff in a, in a text file and you can load it into Psi, into Psi Davis. That's what I'm using to analyze it. Um, so let's go to Psi Davis.
which is SCI, so it'll be down here. Excellent, Cy Davis, here we go. So I can use Cy, Cy Davis to import some data. So let's import some data. Uh, I don't want to be on my computer, I want, um, okay, so my computer here, uh, users, the desktop, perfect, Cavendish. And I just need uh, all files, so there's a text file. I can open up that. I can say ignore the first, uh, it's a tab, the separator is a tab. So I can say open, and bam, there's all my data, ready to go. I can even plot this. I could say, I can right click on it and plot as a scatter plot, and there you go. Let's make this bigger. So we can use Cy Davis. There's a, a PDF file on the site where you can use Cy Davis to analyze all this data. Now there's one more thing I'm going to tell you. You see these spikes here? They're weird, right? They're going up the wrong thing. What they are is this. The signal that the Cavendish balance uses. Let's, uh, let's, let's close that and let's start recording. So let's see where we are. I don't seem to be getting any kind of a signal. Oh, here we are. Okay. So I'm bouncing back up. Watch this. If I bring my hand up, See, just by me bring, being here, if you look over here, I shall zoom in on it. So I take my hand away. I can, I can make a, a much bigger, I can make a much bigger signal. That's fake though. That's because I'm changing the capacitance because my hand has a dielectric constant. So you should either allow for that when you're doing your analysis or get rid of it. Uh, it takes a while for this to settle down. It's still bouncing back and forth. Uh, one way to, if you're impatient, as I am, you can get this pin here, and you can stick it in the side, and you can tell it to stop moving. And then, there, we can get it to stop moving, then we can very gently pull it out. See if we're waiting, this is our, this is our uh, data here now. See, it's flattened out. See, it's not moving. Now I'm going to take this out. It's oscillating down again. This 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 should it should uh, start oscillating nicely and playing nice and everything. Okay. And you can start taking your data. Okay, I'm blathering. Goodbye.